All right, there we go. So let's start rolling. There we go. Three, two, and one. Well, Mary Katie, uh, welcome back. Uh, welcome back, Mayor's Monday here at WSAU, WSAU. It feels like we just did this. Well, last time we we talked about it, it was like a special edition. Oh, special edition. Say, yeah, because right, right. Uh, you had just gotten back from the White House. Oh, yeah. uh, yes. You were invited uh, for a panel on lead service line. I uh, suppose we still want to talk about lead service line replacement. Absolutely. Cool. Absolutely. We talked about it uh, last week at Waterworks Commission. But first, um, what souvenir did you bring back from the White House? I don't have it on my desk, but okay. I've really, I only brought one thing back and it, they made us wait outside in line for an hour longer than I guess they even anticipated. So they came around with um, boxes of presidential chocolate. Ooh. So yes, Hershey's Kisses with uh, Joe Biden's signature on the package. So I've been polling. Uh, people think I should not eat them. I should save them. <laughs> so, uh, so far... They are saved unless okay. you know, my husband maybe gets a late night craving for some Hershey's Kisses. But, Why not? Yeah, um, I can see it happening. Yeah, you didn't get the <laughs> presidential Diet Coke button oh, or Yoo-Hoo yeah. button. You, nothing, you didn't get to see anything like that. No, I didn't see that. Okay. You know, there's always opportunity to go back and, you know, explore a little bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, I didn't see it. Shoot. Okay, well, <laughs> I, I was hoping, I, I thought maybe you were able to smuggle it out of the White House, but I don't imagine that smuggling <laughs> anything out of the White House is a uh, good idea. Yeah, it's not really the best thing to talk about. <laughs> not really. Not <laughs> Although really. I will say, so there was a family from Milwaukee there to talk about their story. One of the children had lead poisoning as a child. And it was very fun to be near those kids as they were exploring. They were opening closet doors. And, of course, I was like, what is in that closet? It was very exciting. So if you can visit the White House with kids who are allowed to open whatever doors, do it. <laughs> yes. Uh, only imagine what has been stored in those closets. I did not see any skeletons, but I'm not there. saying they might still be there somewhere else. You can't <laughs> confirm or deny. Uh, we can confirm, though, again, uh, lead service lines yep. in the city, yep. 8,000 of them, yep. roughly. Uh, obviously, the Waterworks Commission did discuss this last week. They've said we are going to move forward yep. with a plan, but that is all we know at this point. There's no everything's got to be out of here by 2028. Right. There's no, we are going to make, you know, you pay this much to have your lead service line removed. It's just that yeah. we are moving forward with some sort of plan, but what that is remains to be seen. Right. So we did a couple of things. Um, there was some money that was returned from other municipalities, not Wausau, um, to the programming to remove lead laterals that we were able to capitalize on. So we're applying for that. We want that. We want to spend it on removing more lead in Wausau. Um, and then obviously we're in this partnership with the federal government and the state government. So there's kind of an interesting communication pattern here of all of us talking to each other separately. But we'll, I know eventually we'll get all lined up um, and we'll work very well together. But um, the federal government is um, using a consulting firm that will help us um, identify MAP, you know, Whatever technical expertise we need to help get us done, um, that's that's what their effort is towards. But they're going to let the state know, and mm -hmm. we'll be working with the state on that. And that was one word that got uh, thrown around a couple of times last week was technical expertise. Yes. Because uh, <laughs> this is, as you mentioned, 8,000 lines, up to $80 million possibly. So this is not something that the city can take on without like a, a detailed plan. Right, yeah. We need to understand what it's going to cost, how we can fold it into our plans as, I mean, we've been doing this for the last however many years since the 90s, pulling out those lines, um, at least on the public side. So this is something we consider every time we reconstruct a street, but now we really want to make an effort to make sure that the public is with us and they are teaming up to remove the lead lines that are into their homes. So yes, it's expensive. Um, you know, I was listening to Mayor Johnson from Milwaukee speak too, and they have, um, you know, an $800 million issue uh, with 80,000 mm -hmm. pipes. So, you know, all that scale, it's huge. We mm -hmm. got to get them out. <laughs> so then as far as planning goes, uh, what could we maybe expect to see in, I believe it's at April when uh you come back to the Waterworks Commission with uh, maybe some more detailed plans. Yep. yep. So we, we're we finishing up the draft plan. We worked with a consultant to figure out, like, what is it that we need uh, for us? Um, and then I'm hoping at least by that time that we'll have more information from the state on how this will work. 
you know, that's one thing that, you know, as local electeds that, you know, when we're talking to folks at the EPA and things like that, we, we let them know that we really appreciate the technical expertise, but the funding that comes with that as well mm -hmm. um, is really important. We did yeah, it again, huh? We did it again. The lights have gone out on us. Uh, but <laughs> I think so, you might have to wave your arm. Yes, indeed. Uh, no, but nonetheless, uh, looking at this, uh, could, is this something that where towards the end of the year we might be able to look at a map of Wausau and say, it's this area in this year, this area in the next year, so people can I think have that's, an idea. I think that's the goal, right? Okay. And especially as it comes to those street reconstructions, the big ones, um, because that's the that's really the opportunity to fix it all right away. So mm -hmm. working on it. <laughs> yes, and, and yep. we will certainly be watching for when those plans do come yes. down the line as well. Yep. Um, obviously the PFAS situation hasn't uh, exactly gone away yet. Uh, what is the latest update on that? I mean, how long, how is our resin holding up, I guess, is the first yeah. thing, right? So, you know, according to our um, pilot study that we were doing last year, um, we were expecting, I don't know, if, between six and nine months um, before we would see the amount of breakthrough um, that would, you know, make us want to change the resin recharge that resin yeah okay. so right now we're seeing we're seeing some of that breakthrough um as we expected um we're still below the levels at which the department of health services has their um standard health advisory so that's that's good um but obviously the permanent solution can't come soon enough um uh, <laughs> because you know re refreshing that resin is eight hundred thousand dollars so we want to do that as few times as we have to but we'll do that um Mm -hmm. with what makes sense for the health of our our community right so yes and <laughs> and of course that permanent solution um coming down the line at you know some point in the next couple of years but between now and then obviously what everybody wants to know is how much is this going to cost me now we did have the five percent uh, increase in sewer right. fees that uh, got approved by the waterworks commission last week but we still don't know about the Right. The big one, the one that's going to hurt the most, I guess, if you're a resident, the 65% increase for drinking water. Uh, where are we at on on that right now? So the DNR hat or the Public Health, um, the Public Service Commission. Man, there's a lot of acronyms, so I'm trying to <laughs> not use the acronym of a tip. So the Public Service yes. Commission um, has the application and the materials that go along with it, like telling them what we um, anticipate spending the money on. Um, mo the majority of which is the new drinking water facility that's open now. Um, they raise the rates for us um, to pay for part of it, um, but not all of it. So that's what we're expecting. Um, mm -hmm. They will have a look at the application materials. They will say, yep, we agree with you. No, we do not agree with you. And then uh, whatever that outcome is, they'll have a public hearing that, the, that we can all participate in. Mm -hmm. um, I remember calling into the last one, it was during COVID, um, which maybe we still are doing during COVID, but uh, during the beginning of COVID and um, really it was pretty quiet. So I don't know um, what folks are thinking. We didn't have a lot of feedback, even you know, folks that usually email me, I haven't heard from. So it's um, been interesting. Yeah, indeed. So we don't know yet when that public hearing will be, but I'm sure when that does get scheduled, it'll be. Yeah, we're expecting it in the next few months um, mm -hmm. with the rate increase expected in June. So mm -hmm. um, it'll be before then. Absolutely. I know there's a statutory requirement. I just don't quite have that <laughs> at the tip of my brain right now. Yeah, indeed, <laughs> indeed. And, and again, we get all these agendas. We will certainly yeah. be watching. You will certainly. Of course you will. Thank you for that. Probably <laughs> be hearing from uh, myself or Thomas at, at one point or another throughout this whole process. But yeah, because uh, everybody, you know, again, this is going to impact residents in, in a big way. And obviously this is something that you want to be done uh, out in the open instead oh my of gosh, behind yes. closed doors. Absolutely, yeah. You know, we worked with our financial, our city's financial advisor, Ellers, to come up with um, what that would all be paying for. And, you know, as they tried to look at, you know, the average family's bill, they, and, you know, of course we're billed quarterly, um, but they were looking at something like your average family would pay about $18 more a month, which would be, you know, somewhere around $50 a quarter when you get that bill. So mm -hmm. that's, it's not nothing. Uh, right. Definitely recognize that. Yeah, indeed. And you do ha still have other resource, some resources that could be available to residents. And uh, for those that are, for those that may have a difficult time handling that, right? Yeah, we have listed on our website and in our latest um, issue of the newsletter, the city newsletter, there are, I think, three programs that you can take a look at. There's one for low income. There's one specifically for people who live in apartments. Um, and then there's one for uh, homeowners. 
Um, so there's a couple of different options to look at. And of course, we're still looking at all of the grants and opportunities available. I'm hopeful um, that Governor Evers announced, you know, his $100 million uh, allocation in his executive budget for PFAS remediation. I'm hoping that that kind of sticks around um, mm -hmm. when the legislature has their crack at the budget. Uh, but we'll see. You know, we're going to have to be flexible and, and right. figure this out all the way. Yeah, indeed. Uh, one more thing then before we let you go, we talk about uh, the um, the homeless unhoused issue mm -hmm. here in Wausau. Obviously, that's kind of something that's been at the yeah. forefront. Uh, we had a couple of alders on the city council uh, express interest in a, a committee of the whole meeting on the issue uh, that's going to be coming up later this month. Uh, tell us uh, what to expect when that uh, agenda comes out. Yeah, so we're still working through the details of that agenda. There was one very specific um, uh, you know, piece of language that they had on the um, the agenda that they wanted to have for the Committee of the Whole, right? It was about starting a city department. Um, and so that is one way to take a look at this issue, right, is just start your own department and have case managers and all of that. Um, so the council will be talking about that. That is what they voted on. Um, but I'd also like to give them other kind of policy questions to talk about because that that is one way to solve it, but maybe there are others. So we have partners, you know, more than a dozen partners who are helping work on the Homelessness Task Force the United Way. Um, we have the county who we have a relationship with mm -hmm. and we need support from and North Central Healthcare. So we're trying to figure out what are those policy questions that the council could really kind of wrap their arms around and start to come up with an idea of how they want to move forward. Um, we do have ideas. I've been talking to other municipalities about what they're doing. Um, it runs the gamut from, you know, really a whole lot, uh, creating, you know, making parks into campgrounds where 300 people will live, right? Um, to, uh, I know in Madison, it's even smaller than tiny homes. They have pallet homes. So, you know, kind of what are, what are we doing here? Uh, what are the options? So I expect that to be an interesting conversation. If you're interested, 5.30 on February 23rd which is a Thursday. Uh, it'll, yes. of course, be live-streamed and all of the things that we usually do. Yeah, indeed. And uh, I know that creating a city department is obviously something that's going to turn a lot of heads because that involves likely a lot of taxpayer yeah. dollars. Yeah, it's not even just bridges right. are expensive, but it's not just building a bridge and being done, right? Right. You have ongoing expense of people doing the work. I mean, that's mm -hmm. really what the majority of our expenses are, people. That's why we try to partner with these other organizations yeah. who are doing the work. So, yeah, I think that will be um, that will be an interesting conversation. Um, I don't expect everyone to be aligned right now um, because they aren't right now. But, right. <laughs> you know, we can talk about it. What are our needs as a city? Um, you know, the elders may have identified things that we haven't yet. Um, so I'll be interested to hear if there's something new. And and on and the other side of that as well, you have these organizations that are doing the work, and, and many of them have been praised or you know been recognized for the work that they are doing. So it's also a matter of recognizing that maybe it's they're successful because they can work outside of the system, and they might just need a little support from the city or another right. entity. Yeah, yeah, and again, you know, we've as a city have started talking about this relatively recently, right? Two thousand nineteen, I think is when folks were talking about the um, ordinance as it relates to the the parking ramps. So it's a, still a relatively new conversation. Um, the numbers of people who are living outside um, are steadily increasing. So I think that's alarming to folks. Um, and if you live or work downtown, you may have encountered some some people who are not their best selves um, and they're trying to figure out what to, how to interact with us. Uh, and so that's a conversation that we're having. We've, I've heard from a lot of business owners, a lot of people who use the ramps. Um, and mm -hmm. you know, it's not across the board. People want to be um, good to other humans and make sure they're able to find their purpose. Um, but there's also an amount of nervousness sometimes when you're encountering people who you don't know how they're gonna react. Yeah, indeed. And again, the the, the whole uh, point of this, or I guess the purpose of this uh, Committee of the Whole meeting is really just to continue that conversation and figure out if we can get to an issue that the city can have a hand in helping solve, right? Right. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. And, you know, it's hard to know exactly what's in the minds and hearts of everybody who's involved in these conversations. But you're you're right. We need to talk about this as a, as a community. Um, and I, I think that we're going to get there. Um, it's never easy. Um, and we're talking about human lives. It's not widgets. It's not, um, and, and you know, the people's 
uh, traumas are complex and addictions and things like that. So keeping that in mind too, um, you know, it's really important that we're thoughtful. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Well, we always appreciate the time. <laughs> we'll look forward to chatting again next month. Yeah.